It's Sunday morning. 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 We're glad to see all that are present for today. We recognize that there are some inclement uh, circumstances as it relates to the weather. Uh, but we're thankful to God for those that are able uh, to be here, for us to be able to be in worship on this another Lord's Day. Gratefully, uh, you have had a powerful good week. Amen, somebody. And the Lord has continued to do for us what we recognize and know already we really can't do for ourselves. I'm just glad to be able to see the people of God on this another Lord's Day. Come with me to the text, if you would, back to the book of Exodus. And let's look together, Exodus chapter 14, and uh, meet me back, if you would, verse number 10 through verse number 14. Exodus chapter 10. And come with me, if you'd be so kind, and let's meet together. Uh, Lord willing, verse number 10, and come down through, Lord willing, verse number 14, as that will serve as the basis for today's discourse. Exodus, if you will. Exodus, and for the 14th chapter in particular. Uh, meet me there this morning, if you would. Exodus chapter 14, and look with me at verse number 10. I want to share the text from that place. Uh, for emphasis in particular, as we are able to develop the theme and or thought, if I might, uh, for this morning's message. Listen as the Bible says from Exodus chapter 14, verse number 10 to verse number 14. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. If that's in your book this morning, say amen if you can. Amen. I want to, and I'm thankful to have the privilege this day to be able to speak to the people of God and all that come together with us to address the subject matter. What are we going to do now? Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 through verse number 14. What are we going to do now? When I look back at this pericope of Scripture, if I might, I'm mindful, and if I might share with you this morning, that the stimulus for this lesson comes as a result of the transitions that life will present us with. Nothing stays the same, and sometimes the means by which transition may be realized does not sit well with us. As such realities are playing out on the screens of our lives, we are to be encouraged by three desirable attributes in the lives of God's people. I want you to be mindful of this because this we say, not only this time, but prayerfully, you understood that as it relates to my tenure being and, and serving as your servant in particular. Those three things that are really uh, anchored in this lesson is, or are, know that God knows, one, depend on God, and then finally, do what God wants. In anything that we're dealing with in terms of this life, first of all, always be mindful of the idea that God knows. God knows and God knew before whatever came up, even came up. God knew that the time would come as it relates to the children of Israel and the circumstances that they found themselves dealing with. God knew before it even began to unfold. So even in our lives today, is the application possible that we need to be remembering the idea that God knows? Then when you understand and come to the realization that God knows, the second thing I want to continue to encourage you is to depend on God. Finally, do we suggest when you depend on God, having an dependence on God, we would conclude then, and practically all of us are able to do the same, that we're going to do what God wants. I don't care what the circumstance of life might present. 
me. I don't care what changes, what issues, or what things might come up. Always be mindful of these three things. Know that God knows. Depend on God and do what God knows. Because if you do this, it don't make a difference what change comes. You'll still be all right because you depended on God and not on man. Say amen and begin. See, every now and again, life throws some curves at you. Amen, somebody. Every now and again, some stuff comes up that you didn't see coming. We hadn't planned for. But life does what life does. And although we didn't know, God knew. Say amen and begin. Now, now let, me, let me show you something. I want, I want you to get this. That's just, that's just a subthesis, if I might, in terms of this lesson. It's not the three subtopics. It's a subthesis, and not only as it relates to this lesson, but prayerfully you've seen this in terms of our practice or behavior, or if I might, our, our, our continued effort, you've seen that reality in our sharing. Now, I want you to see this. In this pericope of scripture, do we find the account of the exodus of the children of Israel. Within the frame of these circumstances, do we look to learn principles that are both applicable as well as beneficial to the saints of God even today? So when you look back at this lesson, I want you to look back with your sanctified imaginations, mindful of the idea that this is the children of Israel in terms of their exodus experience. But I also want you to be able to be mindful of what Paul said in Romans 15, 4, that things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and cover the scripture might have hope. Right. So we look back in terms of this particular pericope of scripture in order that we are able to learn principles even today that are applicable to the people of God. Be yes. with me now. There's no question. Because I've learned in the brevity of my 51 years now that life is full of change. I've learned that sometimes the circumstance that we'll be exposed to and the way by which we get to where we get to might not be the place or the plan or the way in which we don't like to have to go by. But the fact of the matter is, if we'll know that God knows, depend on God, and do what God wants, you'll be all right in spite of the circumstance. Amen tonight. Now, let me show you, 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 let me show you why we're saying what we're saying. And I'm going to give you three things that I really want you to get within the confines of this message on this morning. Perhaps it makes sense. I believe at this point in time in our lives as members, not only of the Church of Christ, but in particular as members of the East Chester Church of Christ, I believe these are applicable subtopics as it relates to us right now. Listen to what I'm saying. First of all, God knew beforehand. I'm going to show you that in the text. Even as these folk got to deal with the circumstance that they were dealing with, God knew that this circumstance was going to come up. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to suggest that not only did God know, but since he knew it was going to happen, he had a plan in place before it even came to pass. That's good right there. You, that's good. You just missed the chance to shot right there. See, you've got some things, and we got some things happening in our lives that God already knows before you get to where you're going to get to that it's coming up. And although you might not deal with it well when it gets there, God knew that it was going to happen and had already set things in motion that a plan is in place in order for you to be all right because God knew before it even began to unfold. Amen. That's what we got to hold on to sometimes because life will throw some, some circumstances at you sometimes that kind of take us aback, if I might express it that way. So first of all, God knew beforehand. We'll show you that in the text. Secondly, they saw, but they didn't trust. They saw but they didn't trust. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes what you see is not the totality of what it is. Amen. 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 That was good right there, brother. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes, even in terms of what we see with our eyes physically, it's not the totality of the reality of the circumstance. Amen. So although they saw, they didn't trust in terms of what they saw. And I'm going to help you with that prayerfully. We'll be blessed by the same. Finally, do I want to suggest within the confines of the time that we have together this morning that we be still and watch the Lord. Sometimes we spend too much time moving, reacting, and trying to do what God has already seen and planned in terms of what's going on. Think about that. If God saw it, knew it was going to come, set a plan in action in order for it to be realized, and then we start to do what we want to do as opposed to being still. See, sometimes the best thing for any number of us to do as people in this old world, be still and watch the Lord. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now let's talk honestly. 
That ain't always easy. Sometimes as we watch things unfold and as we watch things and as we watch life change, it's not easy to sit by and wait to see what God is going to do. Amen, somebody. We have, as a society, I believe, we are a people that have the uh, kind of insight into things that as we begin to note the change, we begin to set plans in place to deal with the change. But sometimes you got to be careful because what we're planning and what God planning might not be in conjunction with each other. And somebody, and if you understand that principle, you've got to know in this whole life that life is always going to be what God wants it to be. So we got to be careful to make sure that as things unfold and as things happen and we begin to try and set our plans in motion, that our plans don't conflict with God's plans. Now, before I delve into this message at length, let's take some time and talk to God about men before we talk to men about God. Bow with me if you would. Pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Father, that you brought us to this point in time in our lives. We thank you that you've blessed us in the very powerful way of which you have. Help us, Heavenly Father, to always be mindful of how good you've been to us. You've not left us, nor have you forsaken us. You've laid your plans out in front of us. And sometimes, Father, we don't always understand what your plan is. Help us, Father, to set our plans aside. That our plans are always in line with your plans for our lives. Bless us, Heavenly Father, to be receptive, to understand what your plan is for our lives, that we are thereby made a better people as a result of the same. Bless us, Heavenly Father, because sometimes the circumstance is not comfortable. Sometimes there's some discomfort in what you do. But help us, Father, that we depend on you, that even in the midst of the circumstance, when we look to thee, our maker, our creator, our sustainer, and our provider. Bless us, O oh Lord, please, and give us, if you would be so kind, sir, knowledge, wisdom, and prompt application of the same in all that we say, do, and strive to be. Bless our minds, Heavenly Father, to be receptive not to Randy Colson Sr., but to hear your word, to obey the same, and be benefited accordingly. Thank you, Father, for it's in the mighty name of him that died on cruel Calvary's cross that we pray. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. If the family agrees, let us all say Amen. 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 Tell the neighbor right now, tell him this message is going to bless me right now. This message is going to bless me. Uh, some of y'all got to wake up. Amen. There's too much help for out there, brother. Yeah, that's what it is. Amen. Somebody listen, listen, listen. If you can stay with me on this, this thing going to bless you. Because what we're trying to do is get you to be mindful of not only the idea of God knows and God knew beforehand, not only the idea that they saw but they didn't trust, because I believe there's some application as it relates to us sometimes. And then thirdly, be still and watch the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now listen, while we are transitioning, and I just need you to tell the truth and be truthful with you, life is always transitioning. Amen. Amen. Nothing stays the same. Amen, somebody. Amen. Is this some real folk? Is some real folk saying amen for me right now? Uh, if you look at the uh, visit that you made this morning to the mirror, think back a few years ago to the visit you would have made a few years ago to the mirror. You already recognize that life is transition. And in other words, life is change. I don't care how much you want that black to stay up there. Amen, somebody. Somebody was talking to me the other day and said, man, you get a lot of gray in there. I was up in my hometown, my home state and everything, and I had the chance to bump into some folk I hadn't seen in a few years. And then I laughed and told them, yeah, it's more salt, bro. It's more salt up there than it is pepper right now. Amen, somebody. But I recognize that even in that, there's a blessing. Amen, somebody. Because salt says it's still living. It's still, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen, somebody. I'd rather have some salt. Oh, Lord. Because God can't stop. Stop the aging process. You do know that, don't you? Yeah. Amen, somebody. So I'm thankful for every opportunity, but I recognize sometimes that in this whole life, there's going to be some consistent change. Now, it's not so much the idea of the change, but it's dependent on how we deal with the change that makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Now, think about this. Yeah. If you're honest, uh, and you've probably heard any number of persons from time to time say, sometimes we struggle with change. Yes. When folk get comfortable and get in a position and get used to, and, 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 and we going along doing it, amen, somebody. I, I don't know if you ever got so comfortable and you ever been driving along on the road and messed around and sat down and, and stuck up down real good in that car seat, set your cruise control, leaned over on your armrest just right, amen, somebody. So you gotta be careful when you get too comfortable. Yes. Y'all not feeling me, y'all not feeling me. See, see, when you get too comfortable, it's easy to lose control, amen, somebody. When you're sitting in your car, you're driving, you're going where you're going, going where you're going, put the cruise control on, listening to the GPS, taking your directions, know where you're going, heading up the road, but you lean 
over, lay down, lean back, get. I think every now and again God needs to shake us a little bit. Amen. So we don't get so comfortable, listen to me now, that we get complacent. Yes. And there is a difference. Yes. So let's, let's let this lesson unfold before us and see the benefit for the people of God. 400 years, they've been slaves. 400 years, 400 years, they served the Egyptians. 400 years, the labor was made hard. 400 years, the people of God cried out to God, Lord. And 400 years, you know, after you have asked the Lord for year one, Maybe after you've asked the Lord for year two, after you've asked the Lord for year three, four, five, and, and it seems like nothing's changing. Amen. So yes. y'all are feeling me. Come here, yes. come here, come here. Stay with me now. And, and in 400 years now, they cried out and asked God to deliver them from their circumstance. Yes. And it's interesting sometimes that what we get in terms of our deliverance is not what we always expect. Yes. Here comes coming back, amen, somebody, a man that left. That was a murderer. Amen, somebody. Y'all do remember a man called Moses, don't you? You might remember that the reason that he left in the first place is that he murdered a man that was jumping on, mistreating one of his kindred men, and he left his whole man on the run. Yes. Yes. God, listen to me. God sometimes uses the most unlikely of individuals. Yes. My life has said to me what I've seen the Lord do, that sometimes what you expect is not what you get. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes we're looking for things to come in a particular package, and when it comes in a different package, we can't figure out, Lord, that's not what I asked for. Yes. Yes. Amen, somebody. Were you that specific, or did you just ask God to bless your circumstance, and then when he delivered your blessing, because it wasn't packaged the way you thought it should have been packaged, you couldn't deal with it, amen, somebody. Right See, that, that's a blessing even for us right now, because that says to me that God uses the most unlikely of individuals. Yes. That says to me that folk that sit in this audience right now that would have thought to themselves that, you know, I can't, I never will and I don't think it's going to happen and it can't come to pass because of where I've been and what I've done. Moses ought to be an encouragement to each and every one of us. Here it is, a murderer that God is going to use to get the people out of 400 years of slavery. When you know that God uses the most unlikely, it ought to say to you, if God can use Moses, God can use me. As long as you've got breath in your body. Because I believe if memory serves me, probably by the time that Moses would leave Egypt, he was around 40-something years old, if memory serves me properly. Memory says that he was, third, he was out there serving for about 30 years, so he's coming back now, 70-something, 80 years old, coming back telling Pharaoh, talk about, let my people go. Yes. Never too late, church. Amen. Let me just drop and stop and say that right now. It's never too late. As long as the blood runs warm in your veins. Yes. But be mindful of what John says in the book of John. John says that night comes. When no man works. Now think about this. All he's dealing with and uh, uh, reminding us of realistically is there's a coming a time in our life we're going to die. Amen. But you know what the good news is in that? As long as God leaves breath in our body, do we have opportunity. Amen. As long as God keeps letting you wake up every day, you've got an opportunity to be something powerful, something awesome, to develop, to deliver, and to be everything that not only you want to be, but more importantly, everything that God wants you to be. Amen. Lift up your head quick bow down your head talking about, I don't understand why has it been this long and why is it happening? Why ain't things got better? Well, here's the circumstance now where they've been delivered and find themselves now in a bad position. Yes. They are surrounded by mountains of memory surgery right on one side, by the sea on the other side, and Pharaoh's army coming up on the other. Look it out now, and they did what a lot of folks do when things get tough, when things can't be seen, when you can't understand, when you can't figure it out. They looked at each other and started to blame one another. Yes. Said to the man that led them out there in the first place, why didn't you just leave us back there? We could have died. Yes. Oh, Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. You'll be real with me. This will be good for you. God knew before him. Yes. Now watch this. God says, why do you say God knew before him? Come back to Exodus chapter 14. Come back to the text. Watch this. See, God not only knew, but God knew what he knew to their benefit. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 
See, anything, anytime you see a change going on, and some of us get frustrated, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? We're going to go back to where we were. We're going to go back to what it used to be. All that we've realized in terms of progress, success, or however you want to label it, is it now going to fall apart? Will it now fall off? Will it now become something that it was that we weren't proud of? Will it now get back? This was like putting it in reverse. No! Amen. Now the problem with your thinking is you depended too much on yourself and not enough on God. Amen. God didn't bring us. God didn't bring you. God didn't bring me. Where he's brought us to this point to just leave us back, to forsake us, and to let us go in digression Amen. unless we choose to. Amen. Amen. When you find yourself in transition, the first thing you ought to do is be careful not to try and find some fault. See, it might not be, it might be that what you're transitioning through is going to really be to your benefit. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Here they are right now, positioned against the Red Sea, mountains, and Pharaoh's army. All right. And the Pharaoh's army is coming to you. Yeah. They ain't playing, they miss somebody. Yeah. So they're thinking and saying to themselves, because they're seeing with their eyes. Yes. 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 Exodus 14. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Exodus chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pahar, between Migdal and the sea, over against Balsaphon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Did y'all see that? God says, what I want you to do is this place and this position is where I want you to be. Yes. Yes. Y'all keep missing. Y'all keep missing. Before Pharaoh's army showed up, before they got to the place that they were, God said, this is where I want you to be. Yes. Is it possible that God Knowing what's coming up in our lives puts us in a place or position that we might not want to be. Yes. But God knows what's going to be. Yes. And God knows what you're going to deal with when you get there. Yes. And God's already got a solution if you'll just depend on God. Yes. The problem is when it gets tough and we can't see a way out, we start to panic and do things of our own accord and forget all about God. Yes. Is there a time in your life that it got rough? Yeah. Is there a time in your life that you got delivered to a place or position and then because you have to make some things happen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Verse 1 and following, remember, God says, tell the children of Israel, this is where I want them at. Verse 3, and Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has Shut them in. They trapped. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Did y'all see that? Yes. Touch a neighbor, verse number three, and tell him, when God traps you, you show up trapped. God. Did y'all see this right there in verse number three? The Bible says, and for Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. They're trapped in that position because that's where God wanted them to be. Sometimes we won't give to God, do for God, dedicate ourselves to God until we find ourselves trapped. Amen. You've seen you've seen a number of police shows, haven't you? You've seen you've seen a number of police shows. You've seen a number of police shows. You've seen you've seen cops and other kinds of things where folk got chased in places, chased in the alley, chased down here, chased down there, and he that rascal didn't turn and surrender until he was in a position where he couldn't get out of it. Right. Yes. <laughs> he ran as much as he could. Yeah. Duck, dodged, jumped, climbed, shot at, and did everything he could. But when he got trapped, yes. It was only then that he put up his hands and came out and surrendered. Yes, sir. I'm suggesting to us that every now and again that what God wants to do with you, what God wants to do with me, and what God wants to do with us is find us in a trapped position. Because sometimes that's the only time that we're ready to surrender to God when we feel like I'll have no other way out. So then when you look at the text, the Bible says, now, they're going to be trapped. Mm -hmm. And then verse number four says this, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart, God says, yeah. that he shall follow after them. And here's what God says in terms of the position that they find themselves. God says, I'm going to get me some glory. Yes. In other words, God says, I'm going to be honored. When this situation presents itself, listen, when you get 
to the place where you feel like you're trapped. Can't do nothing but throw your hands up and surrender. And God then comes to your rescue. You ought to give God some glory. You ought to be able to shout hallelujah. You ought to be able to shout amen. You ought to be able to say thank you Jesus. You ought to be able to say something about the goodness of God. How dare we let God put us in the position he fixed and get us out of and then we sit there like Yes. Are you serious? When you think about it, we think about all the times that God has taken us to what he's taken us and then delivered us out of. It's not that we deserve it. Amen. It's not that we've always been faithful. Listen, these folks are complaining about this circumstance. Yes. Yes. So what are we going to do now? See, sometimes in this transition for a point, you know what I've learned about people go, some of us will fall off. Yes. Some of us will fall off. Some of us out of here. I'll be back when things get straightened out. I'll be back when this is figured. I'll be back. Are you counting on man? Or are you depending on God? Right. Amen. Is the God that brought you here Amen. the same that God's going to bring you through? Amen. Or have you been too dependent on yourself? Amen, somebody. Right. Listen, when I look at this text, God says, I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Yes. God says, I won't let them be in that position. In an uncomfortable circumstance. I'm going to be honored, and they're going to know who the real reason is for them getting to where they got to. You know why Chestnut is doing as well as Chestnut is right now? Ain't got nothing to do with Randy Cole Sam Senior. Ain't got nothing to do with the brethren. Ain't got nothing to do with the sister in. Amen, somebody. It's about God. Amen, somebody. And if you forget that, you'll miss your blessing. See, when you forget that, you'll be saying things like, well, I don't know what we're going to do now. I don't know what we're gonna, how we're going to get there. It was all about God in the first place. So then when I see this, watch this, watch this, watch this. this. Not only did God know but now, in verse number 1 to 4, remember, God says this before they find themselves in the position. Yes. So God knew, and he set a plan in place before they found themselves in the position. Amen. 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 You ought to remember that. Yes. God knows what your life is going to be. God knows what's coming up. God knows what happens before it even begins to unfold. Amen. Amen. Here's, the, here's the problem. Exodus chapter 14, come back to verse number 5. Here's the question. Why do we think we are in control? You ever ask yourself a question? Why do we? Okay, let me read the text. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people, and they said, listen to this, why have we done this? Did he forget about all those plagues that God sent to encourage him to let the people go? Did he forget the death of the firstborn? Did he forget when the death angel passed through the city and all those folk died? Did he forget everything that God did in order to persuade him that I'm God? And you're going to do like I said, dude. Did he forget who was really in control? Now believe and said, wait a minute, why have we done? Yeah, he did what he did, but he did what he did. at some encouraging from the Lord. Yes. 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 I'm going to tell you now. If you ever forget who's in control, you will make a mistake. Right? We're going to start doing things because it's what we want to do. We won't consult with God. We won't consider what the Lord wants. We'll begin to do what we want to do because it's simply what we choose to do. And when the people of God do what they want to do as opposed to what God wants them to do, God ain't supposed to bless you. <clears throat> come here, come here, Mom. Come here, Mom and Daddy. Come here, Mom and Daddy. Think about it right now. When your children were disobedient, the last thing you want to do was reward them for disobedience. Yeah. Because if you did, what you did was taught your child that your disobedience is appropriate behavior. Yes. So when they did what you didn't want them to do, the last thing that you wanted to do was let them believe that you did what was right because you didn't want them to learn from their behavior yes. that you can do whatever you choose to and I'll reward you anyway. Yes. Right. 
Pharaoh thought he was in control. Why, 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 why have we done what we've done? Remember this. Just like God knew then, God knows now. Amen. Right. Second point is this. They saw, but didn't trust. All right, now. You might wonder how the world said that you did that. Here's what I'm going to suggest to you, according to Exodus chapter 14 and verse 17. What our eyes witness is all times not the totality of what he is. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. What our eyes witness is all times not the totality of what he is. Come back to Exodus 14, look at verse number 10, it's right there. The Bible says it like this, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel, watch it now, lifted up their eyes. Touch your neighbor and tell them, I see them looking. Look. Touch your neighbor and tell them, I see them looking. I see them looking. And the Bible says, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. Why? Because when they looked up and saw them coming, they got scared. Yes. Now, now, come here, 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 come here. I, I want you to see something. I want you to see. Not only were they afraid, but the Bible says they were so afraid. Yes. Come here, come here. You got to get this. This is a pleasure right here. This term, so afraid, means that one, I'm going to get you to see this, they were stimulated by fear. Yes. Leave mm -hmm. that marry Because anytime you move out of fear, you more than likely are going to make the wrong move. That's right. So watch this. So afraid, from the Hebrew of which is translated, sore means exceedingly. So they were sore, exceedingly afraid. Simple word from the Hebrew for translation, frightened. They were exceedingly frightened. Right. They weren't only afraid or scared, but they were exceeding. When you get that scared, have you ever been scared enough that your heart started jumping up on your chest? Yes. That you felt your heart? Did, have you ever been so afraid that if you didn't catch control of yourself, you were going to lose it? Yes. I'm trying to keep it PG. I'm trying to keep it PG. Amen. Somebody. Have you ever been in a position that you got so afraid that you would have did something that you otherwise wouldn't have done? See, see, there have been times in life where people have had amazing kind of a strength. We, 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 we refer to it as the idea of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. There's an adrenaline pump. You've seen it. Somebody, a car fell on a man and he was pinned. And another man that had a relationship with that man, brothers, whatever the case might be, took the car and lifted it. He did that out of fear. Because yeah. when fear begins to operate, right. adrenaline pump, right. and you do something out of the ordinary, no. well, sometimes it's worked out to our good, but sometimes it's been a bad thing. Because sometimes what you do when you get afraid, you make a bad decision. Yes, right. My father, some years ago, had a 1976 uh, uh, Caprice Classic. It was just a, a nice car, very nice car. And my, my dad has always been one to take care of his car. Well, he was on his way to work, General Motors that morning, and, and a guy come through the light and hit him. He hit him. My father was a little shaken up by it and thought, didn't think, because that's a lot of times what happens when fear, when fear, when we move by fear, we don't think, we don't think, we don't think, we just react. Yes. So when he got hit, he threw the car upon y'all in reverse. You know what happened? When he backed it up, he slammed into another car that was coming that he didn't see because he responded. What am I trying to get you to see? When you move out of fear, you're going to make a mistake. Amen. Amen. Settle down. Yeah. Know that God brought you. Know that God keep you. Know that God's got plans for you. And move based on that. Don't allow yourself to not only be afraid, but to be exceedingly afraid. How did they do this, Brother Sanders? Because of what they saw. Yeah. They just saw the army coming. They didn't give no consideration to the idea that the Lord has been leading us day and night. Mm -hmm. They didn't give any thought to the idea that Moses had received instructions from God and told them to camp. Evidently, they didn't believe that God was an omnipresent God. Touch your neighbor and tell him, you do know he's omnipresent. Amen. Y'all, you know, come on now. I know some of y'all are little tired. Some of y'all are little sleepy. Come on, wake up now. Touch your neighbor and tell him, God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. Amen. Omnipresent means that God is everywhere at the same time, regardless of time. Y'all feel that right there? See, see, God has the capacity to be where you need him to be. Amen, somebody. Take care of what you need to be. Matter of fact, God has the capacity to travel through time without the limitation of time, get to where you need to, fix what you need to fix, and go on about his business, and you worry about what might happen when God been there, done that, and gone on. God is not limited by the time matter. God is not limited because of today. God is not 
not limited by our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, our 24 hour, our 7 day a week, our 30 days. God is not limited by that. So the fact of the matter is, they are the we are. So they see what's coming. They're stimulated by fear. They're exceedingly frightened. But watch this. As a result of it, I told you earlier, sometimes when fear is in us, this is what they did. Right in verse number 10, verse number 11. They cried out unto God, but they accused Moses. Yes. Uh, yes. Why is it that when we get afraid? Now let me bless them for you. Whose fault is it? Why did this happen? Who's the reason for this being like this? Must have been them. You, you know what I'm saying, Brother Martin. You know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, and you're wrong. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you right now. See, when, when God is doing what God's going to do, it's going to happen the way God wants to happen. Right. You're not going to be able to make that right. right. You've got to see sure that, that if, if you believe in the provision of God, if you believe that God is a provider, that God is making provision, yes, that, that God has a plan in terms of our lives. See, sometimes what God is doing is not what we may want. Come on now. Tell the truth, bro. So the next time that things didn't go exactly the way, don't look around and say, I'm fault is Right. You need to ask God, Lord, I don't understand this. Right. Help me, help me, Father, to do Help me to understand your plan in our lives. Because God's plan sometimes, well, the Bible says it like this, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, yep. so are God's ways above our ways. Yes, right. You can't figure God out on your best day. He means surprised. We can't, we can't. And, and, and listen, listen, listen. I'm intentionally trying to help Chestnut. Yes, sir. I'm intentionally trying to help Chestnut because all that has been accomplished, all that has been realized, all that we have arrived at, we don't want to digress. Yeah. Yeah. Is that not plain enough for me? Yeah. And when transitions happen, you need folks to step up. Yes, sir. Yes. Things need to be taken care of. Yeah. It always happens when this changes or that moves. Yeah. Who's going to take care of that program? All right. Who's going to take care of this thing over here? So there are some moves that need to be made as things are transitioned. Yes. Yes. Now you can you can go around and look for somebody to blame and accuse somebody. It's your fault, it's their fault, it's all this kind of stuff. But what we really need to be doing is get things together so that everything is all right. Yes, sir. Amen. Our history says a lot of times when things are happening and we didn't see it, or what we saw was what we were uncomfortable with, then we start accusing one another. Come back to verse number 11, Exodus 14, watch what they did. And they said unto Moses, Here, here's the accusation. Touch a neighbor, tell them, don't accuse nobody. Don't accuse nobody. Touch a neighbor, tell them, don't accuse nobody. Don't accuse They said unto Moses, it's your fault. That's what they said right there in verse number 11. This is your fault. Listen to me. They were in bondage 400 years pleading for God, get us out of here. Yeah. And he did. Oh, yes. But now things get yes. kind of uncomfortable, and the first thing that the people of God do is turn on one another. Oh, no. Yes. That ain't nothing new. We still do it today. We still do it. If we just tell the truth, we still do it today. Uh, he said, I don't believe, I don't agree with that teaching. And the first thing we want to do is, where do you get that from? I don't agree with that. Well, you might not agree with it, but if it's the book, it's the book where you want to be or not. We need folk that are mature enough in Christ that they'll preach the word regardless as to what people want to hear sometimes. Because everything that God said is not easy to receive. How well we're going to do in terms of transitions and when things happen is really dependent on where we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's going to, your, your faith is going to tell off on you. If you weep, ain't nobody got to say nothing to you. All they got to do is watch. That's it. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. So when they get into some difficulty, yeah, they cried out unto God, but they accused Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses has been dealing with them all in years. <laughs> Now, wouldn't it have made sense if Pharaoh and the Egyptians kill us, if Moses don't die to you? We act like there's a separation between the leader and those he's leading. The last time I checked, we in this thing together. If this boat don't float, we all gonna drown. Amen. <laughs> you missed that thing. Listen, I ain't trying to, that's just as foolish. Why would you sit in a boat where all of us are in a boat together, pull out your 45, booyah, booyah. It reminds me of the most stupid cartoons. I can't help it. I, the imagery just comes to my mind when I use the illustration. Y'all seen it? Y'all done seen your 77? 
Brother Mark, I, I know you didn't see it. They just ain't gonna tell me the truth. You didn't see Sam chasing Bugs Bunny and all that. They run out there getting the ball. Well, Sam is so concerned about shooting Bugs. Bugs do some junk and he boom, bro, hold in the boat. Bugs always got out of stuff. Amen. Yeah, yeah. He hard. That's a whole thing. <laughs> 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 Amen. Somebody. Don't go hold in the boat. We all in this thing together. Amen. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. I don't want a problem, but some of y'all might not care, but I, I kind of like them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That like y'all like them. So they cry out to God and they accuse Moses. Yes. Now, watch this. This is just the truth. Fear, you write this, you should make a note of this, it's good right here. Fear forces flight for family familiarity. Oh, yes. Did you hear what I said? Fear forces flight for familiarity. Now watch this. Even when the familiar is faulty. Folk will, when pray, resort back to what they're familiar with, even if the familiar is not what's best for them. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. A man goes to get his daughter out of an abusive relationship. Yeah. Man been whooping. I need to give y'all some real illustrations. I hope y'all can. Touch your neighbor and tell him he's about to bless me right now. Uh, about to bless me. Sometimes you got to deal with people on the church. I hope you can get this. This is just a reality of circumstance. Man finds that his daughter's in an abusive relationship. Gets his stuff out the closet, loads it up, yes. drops it in his pocket, and he's going to get his baby. Yes. And then she's coming with him whether he, the abuser, wants him to or not. Yes. He walks into the house, the guy looks at him, realizes he's seriously ain't playing, and by the way, notices a little bulge in his pocket. Yes. Amen, somebody. He tells his daughter, get your stuff and come home and get out of here. And he takes his daughter to his own house back with he and his wife, where she is safe. But when she's back in mom and daddy's house, she's got to live the way mom and daddy. You ain't coming in here in your time. You ain't bringing this in your in here. You ain't bringing that bootleg girl down, drunk back in the house and coming out. You're not coming in here. You start getting uncomfortable, and she will leave yes. her deliverance to go yes. back to that idiot. Yes. And y'all know I'm telling the yes. truth. Yes. Yes. It's not that she's so dependent on him, he's familiar. Yes. 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 What's your point, Russell? In transition, don't leave where you arrived to, to go back to what's familiar. Yes. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. We turn and leave what was good for us because Sunday came when we got uncomfortable, we got tested. Somebody told me anything that's got any value, you might have to fight for. Amen. Matter of fact, I believe the Apostle Paul said we ought to fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Amen, somebody. And he says, not as one that beat the air. You understand that? This is not a fight where we shadow box. Yes. When a person is shadow boxing, you do understand there's not an adversary in front of them. Yeah. They dancing and swinging and bobbing and weaving with Ali and all them uh, heavyweights. And from that time, and I used to love to watch them guys, but Ali was not only good in terms of shadow boxing, Ali was good when you put somebody in front of him. Yeah. See, amen, somebody, if you understand the fight in Christ Jesus, yeah, there are some times that you try to exercise and get yourself together, but there are some times that there's going to be an adversary in front of you. Amen. How do I know that? Well, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, that Satan has a royal lion walking about sick and whom he made him out I heard Paul say in Ephesians chapter 6, around verse number 11 and verse 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Listen, before you start blaming anybody, before you start accusing anybody, before you start saying it's somebody's fault, listen and know this, your enemy is not flesh and blood. And that's what folks do all the time. Transition comes and folks say, well, see, they must have mistreated. If they didn't, if that didn't, and, and then you know what you have? The people of God fighting with each other. Yes. Yes. The adversary has accomplished his mission. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Fear forces flight for familiarity, even when the familiar is false. Yes. I know I can prove this. Yes. Come to Numbers 14. Come to Numbers 14. Come to Numbers 14. This ain't the only time. Uh, matter of fact, if you know anything about the children of Israel, you know that they had a behavior pattern. Yes, sir. Uh, they would sin, cry out to the Lord, God would forgive them, God ultimately would deliver them from their situation, and then they would go right back. The pattern continued, 
life of them was very much cyclical. Yes. And before you get too critical on them, know that we are the same. Yes. We cry out unto the Lord. The yes. Lord hears our cry, forgives us, delivers us from our stuff, and we go right back to what we did before we had to cry out unto the Lord, deliver me from what I need. Yes. Let me be blunt. Rosanto, are you trying to say that uh, as things transition, you don't want brothers and sisters in East Chestnut fighting with each other? I couldn't say it any point. Amen. Amen. There's a pattern of behavior even amongst the people of God when transition happens. Yes. Yes. Numbers 14, watch this. Now y'all saw when they got the army comes up and hide them. They got scared. Cried out to God. Blamed Moses. Moses got blamed a lot. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you got to have thick skin when you're going to lead the people of God. Because, because if you don't, you're going to forever be given up. You're going to forever be crying, broken, broke down. Amen, somebody. Uh, watch this, watch this. Watch, watch Exodus 14. Watch Exodus 14. Watch Exodus 14. Uh, Exodus 14. And, and I'm not going to give you, you really should look at uh, verse number 1 to verse number 15, but I just want to give you verse number 1 to 4 because I want you to see how the people of God treated him that had been leading them all that time. They struggled and suffered together. When it's tough for the people that you lead, you got to know it's tough for the leaders. Yeah. Right. Man, it's not like, you know, uh, uh, I, I remember, I think it's what I'm saying. I, I remember I remember some, uh, uh, when, when I moved from my and the man and I, when we moved into our present house, uh, and somebody said, oh, living in the hood, living in the hood. <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> I, I'm living with those I'm serving. Man. Man. I always thought that that was foolish, brother, brother, to hire somebody, have somebody that's receiving a salary to work with people, and then he go way out yonder by himself, isolate himself. That don't make good sense, amen, man. somebody. Man. If I'm going to serve with people, man. you mean I can't live with those who I serve? Man. That just don't make a whole lot of sense. That's just the truth right there. Yes. Here's Numbers 14. Watch this. Uh, verse 25. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel to turn back and camp before Exodus 14, verse number 1. Watch this. For Pharaoh will say of the sons of Israel, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I need to get the numbers. I need to get the numbers. I need to get the numbers. I know that didn't sound right. Let's do it. Verse number 1. All right. Here it is. And all the congregation lifted up their voices. Is that it? Yes. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. All right now. And all the congregation lifted up their voice. Watch this. And cry. Yes. Now, y'all do know. I'm getting ready to close. Y'all do know. Here is the scenario where God has said, I got some land for y'all. Numbers 13. Yes. And I want you all to go check out the land. Yeah. Now, when you go back to Numbers 13, look at verse number 1 and following in particular, because I want you to make mind of, make mention of, make note of who he told to go check out the land. All right. He didn't tell just anybody to check out the land. Man. He told the leaders of each tribe to go check out the land. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. You got to talk to the leaders for me. Don't need y'all to be negative. That's it. Don't need y'all to be negative. Don't need y'all to be negative. Because when the leaders are negative, guess what happens with the congregation? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 When, when yes, the leaders start saying and talking about the congregation, yes. somebody, they didn't move right on over. Yes. Because in Numbers 14, here's the response, not of all of the spots. Here's the response of those 10 spots that were leaders from those various tribes that were sent to spy out this land that God promised to give them, that Lord says, is flowing with milk and honey. And the Bible says in regards to their report, they brought back an evil report. Yes, yes. Sir. Why was it an evil report? Because God said, I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. The leaders come back and say, oh no, there's some big people over there, and they're going to whoop us if we try and go in there like that. Amen, somebody. When you got a negative leader, you're going to have some negative folk. Amen, somebody. So, so watch what the folk do in Numbers 14. The Bible says, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel. Why are they doing this? Because of what those ten spies came back and said. Now, you do know that there were two that came back and gave a good report. Yes. Why is it about, what is it about us that we got to buy into the majority? All the majority right. don't make right. Never has, yeah, never will. Amen. Yeah. 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 All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses. They're the leaders, Moses and Aaron. Watch this. And the whole congregation, everybody, said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of 
truth. If you are lying and the truth ain't in you. Yes. You cried out to God for 400 years, get us out of here. Yes. The Bible says, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? That's a lie and the truth ain't in you. But when folk find themselves in uncomfortable things, I told you they'll turn on each other. Mm. What am I saying to Chestnut? <laughs> Don't turn on each other. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing worse than going to visit somebody's house and the folk in the living house and they're acting a fool with one another. Amen. I don't know how many times I've done funerals and you trying to get things arranged and get things situated and family coming in fighting over who's going to get mama's them stuff. Yes. Amen. Yes. Didn't make sense. I ain't telling you what I'm thinking about. I'm telling you what I know. I, I, I remember there was a homicide situation. Persons in the family got killed. The police boarded up. How did I know that? Because I was with them when they did it. They poured up the house, we left. I get a phone call an hour later. Uh, Chaplain Sims, uh, what, what can we do? Some of our family going in the house getting stuff out. If blood will do that to each other. Some of us don't see each other until we get in your own second. You don't tell me what folk won't do. So the Bible says they lifted up their voices against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Verse 3, wherefore hath the Lord, uh-oh, uh-oh, wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword? Listen, listen, now they're not, not going really, to really push it now. That our wives and our children should be praying. Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. I told you. When fear forces flight, for familiarity, we'll go back to what was, even when for what's familiar is not what's good for us. Right. Here they are, in this scenario, bad report, and the next thing they holler, let's go back to Egypt. Listen. They ain't through. Look at what they said, verse number four. They said one to another, let us make a captain. Wait a minute. What Moses and them leading them? You know what they're talking about, that, don't you? Let's get rid of the leaving. Choose us another leader so we can go back. I know y'all can see that. That's the point of view. They saw, but didn't trust. When life shows you, unless you trust God, you're going to do something of your own accord that's going to be to your own detriment. Last point of this. Be still and watch the Lord. Yes. Sometimes when things are going on and stuff is transitioning, that's not really what you want it to be. That's really not happening the way you want it to happen. And let me let me let me say this. Let me just be honest with you. Uh, when, when, when the transition comes, be praying that that's what God wants to do. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'll encourage you like this. Just pray the prayer. Lord, whatever you deem to be best, let that come to pass. Now, 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 here, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. When you pray that prayer, be ready for what God does. Closing like this. There are some terms here. First of all, Moses back down at the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army, Red Sea. Mountain Valley, the First thing that Moses says as a result of what the people cry out, Moses tells them, be still. Yes. Chestnut, chestnut, be still. I know what happens in times like this. Folk move memberships. Some folks start to come up with uh, uh, excuses in terms of why they ain't coming, why I can't do what you've been doing all the time. People fall off the door. Be still. Touch your neighbor's up, be still. Be still. One of the simplest ways to define this term is reflexively gestation. Kind of reminds me of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 15. Be ye steadfast. Unmovable means not capable of being moved. Always listen to it. How are you going to stand still? How are you going to be still? How are you going to be fixed? Some of us ain't doing enough to be still. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Busy folk are too burdened to be running. Ooh, yeah. that's good right there. That's good. That was just good. That's good for us in that. Listen, 
I know I need Jesus, don't I? Amen. Somebody. If you too, if you busy working, you ain't got time to be running. Amen. Now, if you ain't doing nothing, it's kind of easy to take off running. Oh. <laughs> Just be still. That, that's, all, that's, all, that's all that Moses was saying. Tell him to be still. And then, and then watch what he says. This is good. He says, see. Mm. This, this, I, I wanted y'all to get all of this, and I hate some of you all might not be able to see it. Uh, it, it the, the, the applications, the translation in terms of the definition of this term is so extensive, but I wanted you all to see this. Uh, one of the things that I like is uh, advise yourself. Yes. <laughs> Watch what you're looking at and advise yourself based on you being still. Yes. Pay attention and know what the God's doing. Amen. If you do that, you might find yourself in Christ. Amen. So not only did he say stand still, but he said see. Now did not just see anything, but he said see what the Lord will do. Trying to get y'all away from thinking about what I want to do, what I thought, and how I believe it ought to be. Trying to get you to move away from that and look back and on what God's going to do. Somebody said in the New Testament, if it's of God, you can't do nothing to stop it. If it not be of God, it's going to fail anyway. Amen, somebody. That's why my prayer is, you know, what I'm trying to do, and Renee and I are trying to make decisions and things like that. My prayer goes something like this. My prayer is, you know, Lord, if it's in line with your will, show would appreciate you allowing it to come fast. But if you deem it not to be best, let it not be. And then bless me to understand that what your will. Because, see, there's a problem. Sometimes when things don't work out, we get messed up. Yes. And I showed thought. I thought that would be a good situation. I thought that would be a good circumstance and then it don't come to pass. You messed up. But you might be missing the idea that God knew what you wanted wasn't bad. Yes. Sometimes you got to speak the things in a tentative fashion. Looks good. I think that's what I want to do. I think that's in line with God's will for my life. I'm just not depending totally on me. But I'm trying, well, James would say it like this. What you ought to say is the Lord's will. I'll be this and I'll be this. <coughs> Final thing he said is this. Why is he telling them to stand still? He's trying to tell them, you know what? Just be still. Watch. Invite yourself based on what you're going to see. Because here's the, here's the reality. God's going to fight for it. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Touch name, tell him it's good right here. It's good right here. Touch name, tell him it's good right here. It's good right here. Fight? Means, and it, it's got several things in it, but this is what I really like. It's figurative to consume. Yes. God's telling them, stand still, watch the Lord, yes. and He's going to consume your enemies. No. Yes. No, no. no. See, a lot of us don't want to be called wimps. <laughs> we and all that stuff. Amen, somebody. And so when your enemy comes against you, the first thing you want to do, okay, let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing but space and opportunity. Right, right. Ain't nothing but space and opportunity. Tell them what's the third reaching down in here. Oh, some of y'all still back. I ain't that. You ain't so sanctified. You ain't getting the Lord Lord Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. God is saying, no, no, not that. You just be still. Right. Stand still. Right. And if you will, you'll never see them Ever, never, ever again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, it kind of reminds me what the psalmist says. The psalmist says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I can just imagine that. That's just a good vision. That, that's, just, that, that, that's just a good vision. Can you, can you see your enemy coming and you sit down at the table? I can see man having a knife and fork and a nice big steak. Not the cheap stuff. Ain't that I'm talking about sitting there eating and here he come. And he, he moving and he running and he mad. How dare he sit there all nice and calm. And he, the Bible says he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. What you need to do is sit still, pay attention to what God does, and let the Lord do what the Lord does. That's why I love that idea. The Bible says, that is his mindset, the Lord. I will repent. Yes. You ought to let God take care of some stuff. Yes. After the truth be told, you ought to let God take care of everything. Yes. I'm good. What are we going to do now? Go to the Remember what I told you earlier? That there were three things, and I've been doing this for years that the Lord has blessed me to serve. 
know that God knows, depend on God, and do what God wants. Now, the truth be told, a lot of the stuff that you want to do ain't going to work out until you get back. Some of y'all still trying to find the right job. Some of y'all still trying to find the right man. Some of y'all still trying to find the right woman. Some of you still trying to get this. You got the car, you got this, you got that. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. What we're going to do now? We're going to depend on the Lord. Anything that I do, I want to do because it's what God wants me to do. And so every now and again, I make some plans and I try to do some things. And I always stop and ask God, Lord, if it's your will. So sometimes you might be, you might understand it. Well, Brother Sanders playing just that one thing now. What if it don't work out? You know what? I'm training myself now not to get messed up and say, well, it just wasn't the Lord's will. Amen. God extend your invitation. For those of you that are not members of the body of Christ, you're not a member of the church of Christ. What you gonna do now? We're going to keep fighting, keep seeing, keep doing, keep striving, keep trying to do what we're going to depend on the Lord. Sometimes in our own independence, we need to set our independence aside and count on the Lord to do what you can't see. You've looked at it, thought you understood it, but the reality of it is you don't see it, we don't see it like God sees it. Somebody used an illustration, I thought it was kind of powerful. They said, you know what, uh, the problem sometimes is sometimes we're too close to a thing to really see what it's like. Yes. You ever had somebody give you some advice about somebody that you call yourself like, and their advice wasn't real good? Maybe you ought to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. You ought to, you, you, you had, you had, yes. you were dating some little old crooked, bow-legged boy that you thought was cute, and the, the sun rose and sat on and they met somebody. Mm -hmm. And then somebody outside of your circumstance looked at and said, he ain't the one, baby, I'm telling you. I saw where he was. I saw who he was with. And I saw what they were doing. Yes. He ain't the one. They're trying to tell you without hurting you. Because sometimes when you're so close, yes. you can't see. see. Yes. It's one thing to be close. It's another thing to have the advantage of an aerial view. An aerial view allows you to see things more properly for what they really are. <laughs> sometimes you need some advice from some folk. It's not so close. That they can see what you can. Get on and remember the body of Christ. This is that one that Jesus said he was going to build. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. This is that one that Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 4, when he said, There is one body. And in case you didn't understand what the body is, Paul would say in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, that the body is a church and the church is the body of one in the same. This is that one that Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, wants to add you to. This is that one that Peter was talking about in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38 when he said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is that one that you can be saved in First Peter chapter 3 verse number 21. This is that one that we are brothers and sisters in Christ, Galatians chapter 3 verse number 26, and that by baptism, Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 27. This is that one, that old ship of Zion is referred to. This is that one that you need to stay on the ship. And Satan always wants you to jump overboard. Yes. Satan always wants you yes. to get off. Because yes. if you can get off, you'll leave your safe place. Yes. I heard the Lord say, and lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20. Yes, well, so what Satan recognizes, since I can't get them as long as he's got them, if I can get them to leave him, then i got them. Yes. That's up. That's up. So that's really what he wants you to do. Leave Amen. your safe place. Yes. Leave your safe place. Yes. Leave your God. Forsake it. That's why the Bible says one of the means that he uses to do that is sin. Yes. Did you not know that sin separates us from God? Yes, yes. sir. When you're in sin, you separate from God. Yes, yes. sir. You're not a member of the body of Christ. Somebody ought to told you a long time ago, you're in sin. Amen. And you die in that condition, Luke 13, 3, Luke 13, 5, I tell you, nay, except your opinion, you all the life lives paid. You don't want to die like that. The killer for us in Romans chapter 6 is after we've been delivered from it, we still have the capacity if we choose to go back to it. That's right. That's right. And then I'm going to tell you, when you do, Satan always fixes it up. He'll do. You, you, ain't, you ain't got to be faithful to right. it. You ain't got to be dedicated right. to it. You ain't got to be committed. Just go whenever you feel like it. Really? <laughs> 
I got something you want, and you show up only when you choose to, and not when I ask you to. Do you really think I'm gonna give you what I got contingent on you getting? Oh. All right. We just need to quit crawling for the open door and ask ourselves. Yeah, and sometimes, right. sometimes I understand all 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 the expressions. All says the open door. I don't mind and I understand spiritual things. <laughs> We just look for different yeah, things. Yeah, so. so all for the okey You let folks tell you in your own family. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's the way it is. Come on now. Come on now. You don't know where the book of Genesis is, but you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just trying to get your attention. I hate you, brother. Because right now, ultimately, you got so much to stay. Get out of the of the body of Christ. Come after having birth of the world. Believe in the same. Be willing to repent of your sins to confess that he is Christ. Be baptized in the day. Yes, sir. Uh, For those of us that are members of the body of Christ, when things change, we lose it sometimes. Man. Because change makes us and takes us to a point of being always comfortable with. Yes, sir. Uh, That's not necessarily what I wanted. But you know what? It might not be what you want, but you most you should be concerned about what God wants. Amen. What God does is always what you want. Yes, sir. Uh, so if you need to come and you need to ask the saints to pray for you, if you need the support from the saints, if you don't want to be baptized today, that you can be saved. Come right now together we stand. Together.